Hi, right. Just to, to start off with a bit of background, um, this whole project really came around by um, trying to think about how to present uh, information through maps in different kinds of ways. And one of the ways I was interested in looking into was map art. Um, now, within the Western world, and academia in particular, there's a perception that maps are scientific documents with uh, a cartographic language that you need to read to understand the information. So there's a process of encoding and decoding that's going on throughout the, the, the document with interpretation implicit all the way through the process. And that means that rather than the scientific objective documents that we you know, believe that maps are, they're actually a very subjective and abstract hermeneutic device. So this means that certain non-academic audiences often find it difficult to access the information contained within maps. Now, to look at it a different way, we can refer to the ideas of Henri Lefebvre um, about how space is produced. Now, he put forward a conceptual triad of spatial creation, with spatial practice being the material dimension of social activity and interaction, uh, the networks of interaction and communication that arise through the production process. It's a space that's encountered in the daily and routine practice of everyday life. Then you have representations of space, which is the space of knowledge, signs and codes, through which a society's relations of production and the order imposed by those relations reproduces itself. Now this consists of maps and plans, information in pictures and signs. It's the space conceived of by the architect and town planner, the scientist and social scientist. It is space portrayed in GIS, it is space measured and quantified and plotted. Now these representations are usually central to forms of knowledge and claims of truth made in the social sciences and in turn ground the rational professional power structures of the capitalist state. These are the spaces of maps. Then lastly you have spaces of representation. Now these reflect the inversion of representations of space. It's the symbolic dimension of space. It's space is created through reaction, resistance and reappropriation. It's the space of graffiti and the desire lines of people that cross the grass rather than following the pavement. It's the space of art, the underdog and users. Now if we intend to communicate effectively with audiences usually overlooked by academia, we need to make sure that the hermeneutic devices that we produce use the arena of spaces of representation. Now one means for this that I looked into was, as I say, map art, which is a highly representational mapping system that embraces the subjectivity inherent in all maps. Now, to start off with, one of the ideas I looked at was games and maps. So to take a case study, I took the Danebury environs. Now Danebury is an Iron Age hillfort located in Hampshire. And after a series of excavations at the hillfort, uh, a series of prominent contemporary sites surrounding Danebury were also excavated with the results used to create numerous models of society within Iron Age Wessex. Now my experiment was to turn this academic device and the ideas and models of society behind such a map into something that was more accessible for non-academic audiences. And the result was this. Um, Basically, I turned it into a map. It's a, basically a very simple device in many ways. You start at the beginning, you throw your dice, you progress around the board. Um, the first thing to note is 
that the abstract imagery and symbolism inherent in most maps is gone. It's very representational. You can look at it and you can think, well, this is a settlement, you can see it's enclosed and you've got people <coughs> within it. So you can, it's very clear what you're looking at. Now, unlike most maps, this is inhabited. There are people within it. I'm not much of an artist. There are lots of stick figures. But it's inhabited, it's populated by people, it's populated by animals. Most maps, there are no people. It's just a blank, empty landscape. Um, and rather than a passive document, it demands the active engagement of those that play the game. So it has squares with more information and instructions that are tied into the message that you wish to communicate through your map. So instead of a purely spatial or relational imagery, information, you're also able to represent processes, activities and beliefs. You're effectively writing people back into the map. Now, the game can stand alone without any additional supporting information, but it does present opportunities to break out from the map to a publication. So each activity square you know, could actually contain page or chapter references to, for example, in this case, the Danbury uh, book. Um, so if you're playing the game and you become interested in it at a certain point, you can then kind of follow it up afterwards. Now, material culture can also be written into map games as well. Uh, and in this example, I've produced out of play at the last moment, obviously, some counters. So these are the material cultural representations of the Iron Age. So you have a, a rotary kern here, you have some very poorly made pots, you have a roundhouse, a raised granary, a spindle wall. Again, these can all be tied back into pages and chapters. Want to know what a spindle wall would look at page whatever of the publication. Um, so players are also thereby engaging unconsciously with the physicality of the past. Now, such maps are obviously well suited to transmitting messages to children and families, but may also be a valuable learning tool for those that are otherwise hard to stimulate, such as undergraduates. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, to conclude, in our Western ethnocentric world, we have a very set idea about what a map is and what it does, how it must be scientific and accurate. But we need to remind ourselves that all maps are abstractions, and regardless of their Cartesian accuracy, are mere analogies of the world rather than the reproduction of reality. Map art, in many ways, harks back to earlier forms of mapping. It allows us to engage with different audiences in different ways. Game maps are in rich in easily accessible information, but most of all are a fun and rewarding of com way of communicating our ideas. Now also, if anybody is interested in doing something like this, a very challenging but rewarding and fun thing to actually build and you know think through and work out how to actually make one of these and make it work. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.